It makes much more sense to hire a crew here if you're trying to stir an industry up here. So that's where I'm trying to get this thing going. There's been classes and stuff that we've been involved in. And, uh, that's, and we've hired seven interns from those classes on this show here. And uh, hired them. Not, they're not just working for free. They're expected to be professional. They're, uh, they're, and they're, be, they're behaving themselves. And they're learning a lot. And we're not killing them. We're, 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 we're just, they're, they're working 10 hours. They get three meals a day from us. They get camaraderie, they get mentoring. Uh, now these interns indeed do everything, but they primarily are assigned to uh, one of the keys. So it's kind of, I think it's a good way to go. And they seem to get it. Uh, my responsibility is as the first AD, or first assistant director. Um, basically what that means is that I am the voice of the director. Uh, my responsibility is basically to control the entire set so that the director can be as creative as possible. Um, I'm also responsible for um, helping with the schedule, making sure the schedule is run on time, making sure we make our day, making sure that everybody's working ahead, making sure everything is under control. So basically, I make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing and then plan ahead for the next steps along the way. I'm also responsible for the call sheet and the production report and uh, basically just sort of checking in and making sure every, all the department heads are, are functioning at full capacity. Um, now this is a small production so a lot of people tend to wear more than one hat. Do you have <laughs> a secondary hats you're wearing? Yes. On this production, I am the AD department. <laughs> Typically, on a, um, a larger feature, there would be a first AD, a second AD, possibly a second second, and then a series of set PAs. Um, because we work very closely on, with this much smaller crew, um, I'm the whole AD department. So Small independent films, people do wear a lot of hats. <laughs> um, my hat primarily, first and foremost, is script coordinator, which means I'm responsible for all of the continuity. So I am the brain of the director that gets translated from the set to the editing room. So what he thinks he sees on the screen is what he actually has. And I am the keeper of the script, which is the Bible for what we do. And that has all of his notes. Uh, it tracks props, it tracks wardrobe, it tracks set dressing, lines, line changes, light up, set up, day, night, those kinds of things. And that all has to be tracked so that we can move from scene to scene when we're editing. Uh -huh. And the other hats I wear, I'm monitoring to make sure wardrobe is matching. I have wrangled children today, so I'm an extras uh, wrangler. And so you guys know, he, ha he says, do you want to go see the boat? Where the boat's driven, that's when you yell, right? Okay. I've taken care of dead eels, um, so we've all done a variety of different things. But that's pretty normal when you're dealing with, um, with this kind of a small, um, tight-knit crew. Uh, I'm the key grip and dolly grip or general all around grip. Um, so anything that needs support um, or anytime the camera's moving or any rigging that has to be done, that would be my job. Kind of any, anything that gets asked for, uh, I have to, have to figure out how to make it work. Yeah, this is going to work out good. Craig rigged up this uh, plywood skateboard gizmo because he didn't want to bring the dolly up here. The dolly wouldn't fit through the door. Oh, that's it. Uh, officially on this production, I am wardrobe, hair, and makeup coordinator. And um, that entails making sure the costumes fit. Um, doing fittings for the actors, getting the looks for the actors that the director and I have chosen to do. Um, it also includes for this production um, some blood tricks, uh, which is involving bloody hands, bloody nails, bloody pants, dripping blood. Um, so we've been having fun with that concoction. Um, it's For Renee, it's been pretty simple. It's just a look because she's having the different dreams. So we've just kind of altered that little bits and pieces, but kept her in a basic a basic look throughout the show and we're you know keeping hair simple continuity in this one is extremely difficult because you have got bits and pieces of all these dreams uh, being shot on different days so we've kept hair and may hair as simple as possible so we don't have to worry about was it to the left was it to the right was it you know when that type of situation uh, I'm the sound mixer here on Fitful the production sound mixer uh, take care of all the production sound mixing and, and uh, you know, what's involved with that? I see you got, you've been doing a lot of different things here. Uh, can you talk about some of the some of the 
things mm -hmm. you have to do to pay attention to? Yeah. Um, on this show, I'm, I'm kind of training a couple guys to, to, to do the, the sound mixing here. Uh, one guy um, I have at the sound mixer, and he's uh, mixing the microphone and uh, sending it to the camera, and it's recording on the camera. And then the boom operator is out there, and he's actually uh, placing the microphones in the positions that they need to be for uh, recording the dialogue. Um, is this a, is this a, a real? There's a lot of technique involved with this. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much so. Um, you know, recording sound, you know, is always an afterthought usually on a on a feature, and um, you don't notice good sound in a movie. You usually only only notice bad sound. So when you get the microphone in the right position. And you don't do that, you don't scrape the mic like I just did during dialogue. Um, you have to make sure you get the mic in the right position to capture it. And then you can uh, you know, record a clean track for the uh, perspective from, from the camera. Uh, my title is Gaffer, and uh, assisting with the lighting design and the implementation of that design and supplying the limited power that's available on the 1931 historic vessel to, uh, to keep the set powered up. Happy. You're like the master of extension cords, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and consequently also the master of trying to keep it so that people can walk without rolling an ankle or tripping, uh, because uh, there is a lot of extension cords that are involved in this trade, and uh, uh, with the hazards that already exist, uh, the overlapping steel plates and the thresholds and the doorways and everything else. Uh, one of the things that we knew coming into this project is that we really wanted to try to uh, keep our floor cords uh, in check and uh, avoid the trip hazards that uh, would inherently be a problem, not only on a ship, but a ship that's being dressed uh, for this kind of a film where we have a lot of subdued lighting. and uh, So uh, we're, we're in the dark a lot, literally. And, uh, so. I also wear the hat of set safety officer, if you can't tell. <laughs> but uh, I have a background in that. <clears throat> so, Rich, uh, uh, fittingly, you know, anyone that has a, an ancillary skill um, and can avail it to the film, um, all the better. So, uh, we have to get some painting done today. It'll be interesting to see who, <laughs> based on their <laughs> peripheral skills, is going to get uh, roped into that one. <clears throat> I am the first AC, or first assistant camera. On set, uh, basically I'm in charge of the camera. I'm in charge of anything that has anything to do with the camera, the support that goes along with it, um, anything that Rich, the director, director of photography needs, I'm kind of right there for him. That's the idea. I am a grip and gaffer, and I, I position the lighting, I run the electric and make sure everything has power, and make sure the lighting is set up, and various running around that anyone needs to make this happen. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Cut. <laughs> and cut. You want to go again? Yep. One more time. We're going to go again, everybody?